Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and a very good morning. Professor Dr Muhammad Hashim Kamali, the founding CEO of IAIS Malaysia. Professor Dr Jasir Auda, President of the Makassid Institute. Associate Professor Dr Muhammad Azam, Muhammad Adil, Deputy CEO of IAIS Malaysia. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. All praise to Allah and a warm welcome to all of you to the IAIS Conference Hall for the public lecture, The Future of Maqasid al-Sharia Discourse by Professor Dr. Jasir Auda. This program is jointly organized by the International Institute of Advanced Islamic Studies, IAIS Malaysia and Maqasid Institute Malaysia. Approaching its 10 year of operation, IAIS Malaysia has always been a place where Maqasid al-Sharia being an important aspect of research and focus of discussion. Lectures and seminars on the role of Maqasid al-Sharia in different areas of intellectual exercise and societal life were frequently organized by the Institute. And today, we are honored to have the presence of Professor Dr. Jasir Auda, President of the Maqasid Institute, who is no stranger to IIS Malaysia to deliver his lecture under the title The Future of Maqasid al-Sharia Discourse. The organizer is also pleased to inform all guests that apart from the main event, which is the public lecture, today's program will also see the signing of Memorandum of Understanding between IAIS Malaysia and Makassid Institute just before the lecture, and later to be followed by book launch by the founding CEO of IAIS Malaysia, Professor Muhammad Hashim Kamali and Professor Jasir Auda after the question and answer session. Before we proceed, let us all ask Allah's blessing with a dua. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Was salati was salam ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. O oh Allah, we ask you for the goodness of this ceremony, the goodness of its guests and participants, and for all the goodness found within it. There is no good except your good, and none has the right to be worshipped except you. We ask you for steadfastness in the affair, and we ask you for determination upon guidance, and we ask you for a truthful tongue and a sound heart, and we seek refuge in you from the evil of what you know, and we ask you for the good of what you know, and we seek your forgiveness for that which you know. Verily, you are the knower of all that is unseen. Amin, Ya Rabbal Alamin. Ladies and gentlemen, to start off today's event, it is with great honor that I invite the founding CEO of IAIS Malaysia, Professor Dr. Muhammad Hashim Kamali, to deliver his welcoming remarks. Please welcome Professor Kamali. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Nahmaduhu wa nuswalli ala Rasulih al Karim. Distinguished participants, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm uh, honored to welcome our distinguished speaker today, but also to welcome you all to this uh, occasion. Uh, Professor Jasir Auda is a friend of the Institute and a personal friend. It is not the first time that he is here with us. He has been on uh, quite a few occasions in the past and it is a pleasure to welcome him again to IIS Malaysia, we have many interests in common. And I also share my interest in Sharia uh, in the Maqasid. It is a subject that I have also worked on, and uh, that also brings us closer on a different level with uh, Professor Jasir Auda. He's currently in Brunei Darul Salaam as a distinguished professor. I also look forward to his lecture later on, but by way of uh, opening remarks, if I may say 
that the Sharia is divided into two major parts, the purposes and the means to attaining those purposes, the maqasid and the wasail. Now, the one of the basic questions that arises is how we know these and how do we identify the maqasid and the wasail. Uh, both are partially identified in the sources, the Quran and Sunnah, but also by Ijma, and failing that also by Ijtihad. The Maqasid al Sharia arise from the Sharia itself, it does not have a separate existence. Uh, the Maqasid al Sharia, we sometimes, the Quran refer to the Maqasid in the clear text. When you read in the Quran, Walakum fil qisas hayatun, in the law of retaliation there is protection of life. The purpose, the maqsad of that law is clearly stated. Uh, the purpose of uh, zakat in ghanaim uh, is likay la takuna dulatan bayn al minkum so that the wealth is not concentrated only among the rich. Uh, distribution is the purpose of taxation of zakat and so on. This is again identified in the clear text. But sometimes the Qur'an make indirect references when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that he, he likes this and he does, did, does not like this and he praises or he, the opposite of that. We know by indication that this is a purpose. The ijma sometimes identify the maqasid, for example, it is often said that the essential maqasid are five. Protection of faith, of life, of uh, mind, etc., etc. The Quran nowhere is, it really says them in this order. It is by way of general consensus or ijma that they are identified as such. But when this is not the case, then the mujtahid, the scholar of Sharia, may identify the maqasid through ijtihad. But we see nowadays that this order of priority in the degree of accuracy that is taught about the maqasid is not observed there is a certain degree of arbitrariness entering the field. Uh, often the uh, scholars, when they are writing, they identify that this is a maqasid and that is also the maqasid without really giving sufficient evidence that this is the case. So this is a kind of... Uh, um, um, the kind of uh, arbitrariness that is coming into the identification of the maqasid. One of the reasons for this is, of course, I would not go into a lot of detail, is a certain weakness in the methodology of the maqasid. Although this has been to some extent uh, compensated in 20th century scholarship, has developed the methodology of Maqasid to some extent, but when you compare the methodology of Maqasid to the Usul al fiqh the Usul al fiqh then it is not really as well developed as the Usul al fiqh The Usul al fiqh identifies the formulas for Ijtihad, whether it is Qiyas or Istihsan or Maslaha, etc. Each one is a definition in modes of application, and you have a methodology that ascertains accuracy in uh, the, the identification of the ahkam, which is the purpose 
of the Usul al fiqh another purpose of Usul al fiqh is to encourage ishtihad. How are the, masa, the wasail, the means to the maqasid identified? And here comes the greater kind of, you know, uh, levels of uh, distortion and manipulation. Sometimes people uh, manipulate, use, for example, stratagems in Hila. The purpose is like sometimes uh, well, something is known to be a sale, but the end result is that it is a disguised sale, but it is equivalent to riba. We see it in Islamic banking, in finance, and in other areas. The wasail are also sometimes identified in the text, but more often they are identified through rationality and the textual identification of the wasail is uh, is not very frequent. For example, uh, protection of mal, hifz al mal, is one of the maqasid. One of the ways that the hifz al mal, protection of property, is uh, ascertained in the Quran, it's through documentation of tra transaction. إِذَا تَدَايَنْتُمْ بِدَيْنٍ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّنْ فَاكْتُبُوهُ When you have uh, a contract concerning future obligations, and then reduce it into writing. This is one way, one of the means of protection of mal that is specified in the Qur'an. The Qur'an also identifies uh, contracts, uqud, as a means of transfer of ownership of property, and how is the uqud arrived at? An taradim minkum, by way of mutual consent. This is another means for a certain end that the text identifies, but this is not always the case. More often, uh, the jurist, the judge, the mujtahid, the teacher has the flexibility to identify the means, the wasail. Having said that, as I mentioned, a great deal of uncertainty comes in when the wrong wasila is identified for a certain purpose or that the wasila is accurate but the connection between the means and the purpose along the way, there is manipulation. As I said, that uh, uh, a great deal of distortion happens uh, in many, many areas in the, uh, the Shaykh al-Maqasid al-Shatibi has said that when there is use of trick or hila or distortion, then the purposes of the lawgiver are uh, subjected to manipulation and that is, that must be avoided. Well, I would not want to go into a great, of de a great deal of detail, but this is something that still uh, work in progress, there is a great deal of conversation uh, in the academic community, but also in Islamic banking and finance, even the government of Malaysia introduced the Sharia index of government uh, based on the maqasid. And now, uh, what are the specific ways of identifying those and how are they successfully articulated in the Islamic, in Islamic banking and finance? And uh, in regard to the various contracts, we mentioned Murabaha, BBA, Mudaraba, Musharaka. How are, what are the primary purposes of each of these contracts? Some of this is developed in the fiqh but a lot of this is work, uh, new work. 
So um, with those introductory remarks, I now uh, look forward to hear about the future of the Marqasid, and that from the expert, Professor Jasir Awdah. Assalamu alaikum.